Hey, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to uh, this new video. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about the new tool that I, I just finished. It's called uh, Displacement Manager. And I had the idea of creating this um, little tool uh, since the last update of Chaos Vantage, um, the update that introduced displacement. So uh, I've played a lot with the displacement feature uh, in Chaos Vantage. And I ended up having um, scene with a lot of displacement uh, and topology happening. And my scene was becoming really, really heavy. Um, so I decided that I needed a tool to help me manage all my displacement and my subdivision on my object at the same time. Uh, so I came up with this uh, little script that I'm going to show you right away. All right, so it, like I said, it's called Displacement Manager. And if you uh, have it, you, you're going to end up with this little icon here. So this is what it looks like when you launch it. All right. And so how does it work? Well, uh, first you can see I'm in 3ds Max uh, 2024. I have VRA install, installed, sorry. And this is my 3ds Max viewport and I'm using Live Link right now uh, in Chaos Vantage. So everything that I'm going to do in 3ds Max, you're gonna see it uh, updating here in the viewport. Um, so how does the, the script works? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, anything that has, uh, well, right now I have this uh, shader ball type of object selected and I have a VRA displacement modifier on top. Uh, so this is why it's appearing here. So anything uh, in your scene that has this uh, modifier on top, you're going to see it appear here. Uh, for example, right now I have these two sphere. I'm just going to add a VRA displacement modifier here. I click this the other one here, add it, and now you can see I have all my object um, in the object list right here. So if I click on one, you can see right now I have a displacement toggle object on, uh, and this is basically just controlling on and off uh, this little icon here. So if I toggle it off, you can see I'm not using it, and now I'm using it. Um, so let me throw some material on my object so you can see better what it does. Um, so I'm just going to drag this material here on my uh, cube. Just like this. It's going to move this away. And so um, you, you can see uh, nothing's changed. I have my material, but I don't have any displacement. So if I toggle this off and on, you can see like nothing is changing really. Uh, and this is because I'm not using any uh, displacement map right now. So I have to tell either uh, my modifier to use a specific map or I, I can use um, the displacement map that I have in my material. Uh, so to do so, I can click on this here. And right away, you can see now I have my displacement happening on my object. So you can see like the overall shape is changing uh, and I can play with my displacement just like that and just make it uh, looks to whatever I want, just like that on the fly, right? So let me put it at something like this. And so now I'm using my displacement, so which is good. This is what I want. Um, let me add uh, some more uh, material on the other sphere. So I'm gonna use, uh, let's use this one here for this one. And so if I click on the right sphere and you can see right now I have auto select check. So every time that I switch in my object list, you can see I'm selecting the object in my 3ds Max viewport. Um, so this is this can be helpful. Like if you want to know exactly what object you're working on, if you have it off, uh, it's going to keep your selection, but it, you're still going to affect the object selected in the object list. Um, so depending what you're doing, this might be something you want off on or on. And if you have auto focus checked, um, if I go to perspective mode, uh, you, if I swap uh, object, you can see I'm, I'm just like zooming onto my object just like that. So this can be useful as well when you have a huge scene that you're working on and you, you want to be sure what object you're working on. Um, so anyways, by default, it's off. So let me go back to my camera. 
and so I'm gonna add another material onto the other sphere so something like this all right so now if I click on my sphere I want to use uh, my material displacement just like that and I'm just gonna increase this a little bit so we see better and uh, I'm gonna do the same for my right sphere use the material and I'm gonna increase this a little bit just like that all right um, so before I go uh, to the next feature of the tessellation, I'm just going to explain how this works here. So you can see you have a displacement toggle object and scene on enable and you have the same for the tessellation. Uh, this here works the same. So like I said before, uh, if you click on uh, on, you're going to toggle your displacement and this is by object so if i toggle this one off uh, this one is still on just like that right and if i click on uh, the the green button here i'm gonna disable all of them so you can see now in my uh, viewport i have no displacement and if i click on my object you can see the eye is toggled off and now if i click back on disable here it's going to uh, enable um, my displacement again but only on the object that add displacement on before i click on the green button first so that means like if i go back to my uh, art surface ball here it's still off and this one is off again um, so by default like as long as you have displacement manager on uh, open i mean if you um click on this button here it's gonna like uh save uh, your um how can i say that it, it's gonna keep uh and remind which one were toggle on and off um so like you can see if i toggle this one on i have these two first on this one is off i'm clicking on it all off i click back you can see off on on right um, but what if I want them to be all on at once uh, when I click back on enable uh, you can control uh, left mouse click on the, the bottom here and now they're gonna be all toggle on all right uh, and like this is working the same for the tessellation here so I'm not gonna go through uh, it again when I'm gonna explain you what, what the tessellation does so just keep that in mind um, but now that the cool stuff is um, the tessellation so I'm going to just delete my sphere because I don't need them now I'm gonna focus on this bad boy here and I'm going to uh, refresh so you can see now I only have my surface ball um, and I'm gonna add tessellation so right away you can see uh, <clears throat> a mu much more uh, detailed uh, object if I click on on you can see right away what it does just looking at the crack you can see already I have much more definition uh, in my displacement and this is because uh, Vantage the way Vantage render displacement is it's looking for subdivision um, uh, into your mesh to 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 try to achieve a better result in the topology of your displacement um, so I added quite a few uh, mode that you can use and you can see right now like under my displacement mode I have a new modifier called the M underscore test and this is uh, basically um, my, my tessellation here that I just enabled. So if I remove this one, you can see I, I now don't have my uh, modifier. And if I click it back, you can see it like this, uh, on, off, uh, depending what you want to do. And then you can swap it into multiple um, mode here. So the first two uh, are pretty much the same. Uh, and they are using the subdivide modifier in 3ds max uh, this one is the tessellate modifier and this one is turbo smooth right so you can swap into the mode that you, you'd like um, just like that and if you play with the value here under the tessellation polygon size 
depending if it's the Salate or the first two or uh, Turbo Smooth, you can go down or up and it's going to subdivide your mesh. Um, so sometimes you can get better result by uh, increasing the amount of polygon on the object. Um, you don't necessarily have to go crazy with this. Uh, sometimes just, I don't know, like I'm at the 20k polygon right now, but if I put it at 2, I don't see any big difference, but I, I have a much more uh, a low res mesh. So just keep that in mind. Like sometimes if you have really, really small details that you're trying to, to get for a close up shot, maybe you can increase it, uh, but I wouldn't add too much topology because it's going to increase a lot your um, your memory use in the chaos vantage right um, but if I uh, go down this you'll see I'm gonna end up having this pop-up window appearing and this is basically telling you like hey stop bro you're going to crash your computer and this is because uh, if you go all the way down uh, playing with this value you can uh, reach like a crazy amount of polygon and you're gonna freeze your computer and you're gonna need to like um, you know go to task manager kill it and reopen your scene and you might lose some work uh, so I added this feature just so you guys are not mad at me and uh, if you want to go even like higher in terms of like polygon on your mesh uh, you can do it by uh, changing the value here. So right now my value is at um, 15 grand, but if I want, uh, I'm gonna put it at like five millions, like this. And now if I keep on going lower, you can see my uh, overall polygons are gonna keep going higher and higher until I reach whatever, like five million polygon. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna crash my uh, <laughs> PC right now, uh, but you can see now I'm over my limit of uh, 50K uh, polygon, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the tessellation. And like, like I said, you have multiple modes. So like if I put it back to like tessellate like this, you can see like it's, it's doing a different type of uh, algorithm to subdivide your mesh. Um, so this one tried to keep it quad, I'd say. Um, so it, it might be a different, um, it might give you a different result depending what you're trying to achieve. Um, and what I like about the tessellation uh, modifier is uh, it keeps the, the overall shape of an object. So like if I create a cube just like this, um, just gonna add a very dispensed mode on this so you see my box now select my box I'm gonna use a uh, tessellation on my box if I add uh, tessellation on this object you can see like my overall cube remains the same but if I use turbo smooth it's going to smooth everything out you know so depending on the object that you want to add subdivision to um, if you have a specific model that you you model using uh, Turbo Smooth on top or Open Subdiv, whatever, um, this might be something that you want to use. Um, but I like to use the tessellation because I'm not lo losing any any uh, shape onto my object, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, you have now tessellation on the fly, and what is great about this the this tool is uh, when you have multiple objects now you can just uh, come down here and just you know disable all of them and keep on working in your scene and when you're ready to render you just boom click on and now you go back to uh, whatever you had before right uh, so just to show you uh, I can do some example maybe like it's gonna add other materials so you guys can see better what it does so i would say uh, that would be my material for this one and what if i add a new material just to test it out more all right so let's try this roof tile material um okay i'm going to increase this well just reset the value 
just like that. Uh, by the way, sometimes I don't know why, but uh, Vantage is not uh, refreshing uh, my material displacement, so I just have to click it back again, just like this. So just like if you don't see any change, just make sure like you check this again. Uh, so now you can see I, I do have a uh, displacement in my material and we'll uh, so what if I put it like that and something like that and just keep on going and you can see like the um, the tiles here are getting rounder uh, depending of like the, the the amount of polygon that I'm adding on my mesh so it, it is clearly doing something um, Depending on what you want in your scene, like this might be too too many polygons uh, to render. But it, anyways, like Chaos Vantage can take a huge amount of polygon, you know. So uh, you can just make it crazy. Uh, just toggle this off while you're not using it. And then at the render time, you just toggle everything back. Just like this, you know. Um, so... We can do maybe one last uh, material. Um, just trying to find something cool. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's try this one. Again, just refresh and then increase this. This one you can really see like here, it's really like increasing the displacement. So anyways, you need to find the correct value that you want, but I think it looks pretty good. So anyways, guys, um, hope you like my tool. If you do, uh, you can buy it uh, using the link in my under my video. Uh, this is gonna help me, uh, motivate me a lot to keep on uh, doing and developing tools like that to share it with you guys. Uh, and it's definitely going to help me in my life. <laughs> so anyways, um, if you like this, please uh, like, subscribe to my channel and give me some feedback. If you buy it, I would love to hear from you guys. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.